All right, uh, welcome to everyone at the earlier tonight, um, both here in person, uh, packed in and demasked, uh, as well as online. Also, a special thank you to Carol, Nadini, and James for allowing me the honor of introducing these poets. As a polywog of a poet who has not yet come out with so much as a chat book, uh, it's terrifying and really exciting for me to be up here introducing some true bullfrogs of the field, <laughs> such as Dianelli Antigua, Adrian Rayful, Sarah Denez Acant, and Jess Rizcala. The Grolier is one of the few places where I believe the voices of old ghosts, contemporary greats, local enthusiasts, and clueless dilettantes such as myself can be in dialogue. This commitment of the Grolier to raising a diversity of voices and bringing them into conversation with one another is exemplified by tonight's reading. The voices of tonight's readers have been informed by everything from the spoken word tradition to literary academia. The content of their work covers everything from the politics of embodiment to the poetics of emojis to the rapture of crossword puzzles. They are poets, but also activists, visual artists, cultivators of community, and educators. All right, so for tonight's uh, events, I'm going to provide a brief introduction of each poet uh, before they read. So we'll, we'll be introducing Dianelli Antigua first. Uh, however, I've been informed that uh, Adrian and Sarah will be trading poems in a very exciting combined reading, speaking of bringing <laughs> poets into conversation with each other, or Mortal Kombat, as the case may be. Um, and so I will introduce both of them together prior to that exchange, uh, which will take place after Dianelli reads. And then we'll hear from uh, Jess. All right. Dianelli Antigua is a Dominican-American poet and educator. Her debut collection, Ugly Music, was the winner of the Pamet River Prize and a 2020 Whiting Award. Her second poetry collection is forthcoming with Copper Canyon Press in 2024. What's the name of that? Good Monster. Good Monster. Her work has been nominated for the Pushcart Prize and chosen for Best of the Net Anthology. Her poems can be found in Poem a Day, Poetry Magazine, The American Poetry Review, Washington Square Review, The Adroit Journal, and many other places. Please welcome Dianelli Antigua. I listen to podcasts to learn about feminism, watch porn to make sure I'm doing it right. I dance on the bar because coyote ugly, because these shoes and this drink. I'm almost 30, and I still think Bloody Mary is a game with a mirror. Sometimes she appears at 2 a.m., sometimes she's in the toilet, piss reflection the flush. There is a truth <coughs> in this magic. The time I took plan B, then the other time I took plan B, I bled for two months. There could have been a mother in me. And I told no one except the man at Tacos Lupita who asked what I wanted in my burrito, and I think I said, I think I spun around three times and whispered a name. And there was no floor when I fell, when a queen flew from my womb. 
There was glass and napkins and the doctor saying, wake up. Also, feel free to make noise if you want. You can clap, you can snap, you can move me, you can, you can, you can, you can um, do that. That's the thing that all poets do at the end of the last time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do that too. If you want. Um, however, the spirit of poetry moves you to do. Uh, so I'm going to read you a bunch of new things that are going to be in my book, Good Monster. Recently, um, in April, I was at a writer's residency in Portland, Oregon, and the weather changed every five minutes. So this is a poem kind of about that. In Portland, it rains, the sun comes out. It hails, the sun comes out. Then it rains again. The ants find their way to the kitchen counter where I spilled a little sugar. The spider by the nightstand is the second to last lover I want to wake up next to. The doctor says I have an abscess on my tonsil and for three days I can't swallow my spit without wincing. The wind makes the house creak which sounds like someone trying to break into my sick nest. At night from the window, I see six deer eating from the bushes. And I am glad to witness this all you can eat buffet. Web MD says, I could die, but I already knew that. My beloved and I argue through screen, and it's the first time I hear how pathetic this voice can be. Then I smash the spider with my shoe and the hail starts again. In the morning, the dead spider vibrates under the swarm of ants covering it, eating. Uh, yeah, I had a, a lot of fun with insects in Portland. Um, <laughs> uh, they were everywhere. <laughs> um, I was not expecting that, though. How could I not expect that? I was in a log cabin. Um, so, this next poem is a diary entry poem, and I have diary entry poems in Ugly Music, and they'll also be in my new book, Good Monster, and those poems are actually collage poems written using old journals um, that I've been writing in since I was nine years old, um, and through the years I've filled uh, about 36 of them. So this one is diary entry number 34, Epigenetics. It's been eight years, and the ancestors in me are still burdened. I don't know if I am gentle with them. I reheat the coffee in the microwave, find gratitude when they take what's theirs and then leave the rest. There will always be scarcity, less food, less clonopin, which is to say I own a legacy of fear. Tonight, another grandmother is dying, and I cannot heal her. But I line up my idols like bruises on my belly and perform a nostalgic ritual. I shower with my clothes on, like I did as a girl, with a man who wanted to be my father. When I became a little bird, helpless to affection. Did he make me a good monster or a bad one? I can keep my cage clean and wipe my mouth with my thumb. <laughs> That's actually where the title of my next collection comes from. Is that, that um, this next poem is an Ars Poetica and it's also a diary entry. Diary entry number 28, Ars Poetica. I start where I am most afraid. An addiction to beauty is a place to keep a loss. My father liked to sing love songs, his lips elongating each vowel, his tongue 
breaking the center of everything. And he, so tender to the sound, would burst. I'm listening to jazz in the park again, crying in rooms that don't belong to me. It's true. The wrong music can be damaging, and every photograph is an elegy. I practice posing in bathroom stalls to feel effortless. All flowers want to be looked at, and chasing the moon is a chronic condition. How can I translate where my finger lands into language? In conversation, I drop a little French like a baby out the window on TV. Anyone can be dead and look like art. A long life is avant-garde. I place mine on the open shelf on the edge. Sorry, that my phone is so sad. I tell people I'm just your friendly neighborhood savage. I'm just trying to be on your savage. Neat. Um, so here's this next poem called Diary Entry Number Three, Study on the Negative. <laughs> With this poem, <laughs> right? Let's just get into it. Um, so this poem, this diary entry poem, I was really, really interested in negating in every single line, um, or at least doing a mirror image of a negation. So even the word on is in the mirror image of the negation, no. Um, and just thinking of like mirror images in, in general. So I was really interested in exploring that and some study on the negative. I want to be the prettiest bird on the internet. So I pretend they can see me through the motel mirror. I practice lust, little loon on a bed of no love. The mirror says my life is not worth the imitation of life. I am not a favorite. I am not Noah. I am the dumpster where I find the angel of the Lord spelling my name with nothing but fortune cookie crumbs, which is not to say there's hope. No one will believe me that it might be a disease making me beautiful for a limited time. For a limited time, I don't have a will or testament, but I have this never-ending emptiness to give away like jewels. Don't make me out to have value when all I can't do is exist. I don't need to be a car flipped over on the side of the road. I romanticize displaying my mortality like a da Vinci behind a red velvet room, the Mona Lisa, slightly awkward, the crowd taking pictures. And I have two more for you. <laughs> Close the door. This is another uh, Portland poem. After the first night alone, somewhere new, I'm up too early organizing my pills in the drawer I'll only use for a month. And the shampoo in the shower, always label facing out. Home is where my compulsions are. Home is where I've cried the most. In Brooklyn, every L train was home. Those late nights or early mornings of giving in to what I thought I deserved. I deserved less than love then. I deserved the shriek of the subway, digging the city from underneath my fingernails. Home was where the water turned gray, washing my hands caked with New York's daily gift. Once, I was taught home was where God's people were, and I believed it, wagged my tongue in a language I don't speak anymore. In this language, I love you could have sounded like a trippy sound of music. 
like shuffling the solfege syllables, si, do, re, mi, fa, la, fa, la, sol, ti, re, mi, over and over until the trance left you falling out, the spirit waiting to catch you. I would have fallen for any lord. I would have fallen for the fallen angel himself if he promised me belonging the intoxicating smell of my beloved shirt, the armpits right with it. And this is uh, my last poem. Thank you so much for being here tonight and uh, for, for listening, I appreciate it. We never stop talking about our mothers, Renee and I, hers and the urn by her desk, and mine, alive in an apartment 40 minutes from here, probably watching a telenovela or frying plantains, texting me goodnight. Renee's mother isn't really in the urn. She's in the blue wall, the beach landscape painting the dog barking at the unexpected, the jangle of her silver bracelets. We are all carrying our mothers, and we are all better daughters with the dead. Renee tells me I am wise, and all I can think about are the moments of my unwiseness. Driving and sipping margaritas from a water bottle, the bruise on my arm, and taking it back. Her husband is away at the family cabin, and she is glad for the space. My husband doesn't exist, and I am sad for the space I make my home in. I buy sunflowers and goat cheese and throw a dinner party for the ghosts. I don't know Renee's mother's name to send a proper invitation. And I don't know the names of the women in my family past my great-grandmother. So how will I call upon them when it's time. Will I call them Mary, or Venus, or Yamaya? I've yet to burn the Palo Santo and the sage. I want to leave behind a legacy of light. I just want to leave someone better. Thank you so much. place where we sell books and um, I think y'all brought some copies okay awesome so get in touch with James the inimitable James Frazier in the back there and he can hook y'all up with some poems in print form in book form Adrian Rayful is the author of thinking inside the box Adventures with Crosswords and the Puzzling People Who Can't Live Without Them, and the poetry collections, What Was It For?, and Our Dark Academia. Her writing appears in publications such as the New York Times Book Review, The New Yorker, The Paris Review, Poetry, The New Republic, The Drift, and many others. She is currently a lecturer in the Princeton Writing Program and teaches with the Berlin Writers' Workshop. Sarah. Denise, Denise Akant is the author of Babette, winner of the Rescue Press Black Box Poetry Prize, as well as the author of Parades, winner of the Omnidon Chatbook Prize. And another book, Hyperfantasia, is forthcoming from Rescue Press. It's here. It's, 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 it's more than it's, it's, it's more than for, it's, it's coming. It's coming at you right now. Um, from Rescue Press. Uh, Akant co-curates the Khan Ya Makan reading series in Brooklyn and teaches poetry as professor of practice at Tufts University. Please welcome Adrian and Sarah. Bookstore. 
thank you so much for having us. Um, this is a very special event for us because we're launching our books together um, and also get to read with Dianelli and Jess. Um, so we're going to do this braided reading um, of our poems. Uh, so I'm going to, I, a little backstory about how we wrote these. Um, so uh, these manuscripts, we were, during the pandemic, um, sort of uh, after a prompt given to me by a genius friend and poet, Hala Alyan, um, to write a poem every day uh, in a Google Doc, Adrian and I did that exercise. Um, and yeah, um, and so the, I guess the exercise is write something that you are putting in this same Google Doc um, over 30 days. And the trick to it is, um, like, then you're accountable, so you have to put something in the Google Doc, but it can be a shitty thing, <laughs> like, oh shit, I have to put something in this Google Doc today. But the real trick comes um, with, like, um, we ended up doing this sort of back and forth in the comments, like, I, you know, I would read something Sarah wrote and just kind of riff on it and make stupid jokes in the comments, and then Sarah would riff on my stupid jokes in the comments, but um, it was really nice because we could see um, and recognize patterns in each other's work that, of course, it's kind of impossible to see on your own. You just think that you're whatever you're doing, and then it's like, no, 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 you're actually like, I see a pattern here, a pattern here. And so a lot of the poems, it, we were not intending to write books out of this, but a lot of them came from that. Yes. Um, and also, I would say some of the poems even came from the comments section. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the marginalia of the Google Doc became material for poems. So there's a lot of meta writing. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so, and because in the spirit of this back and forth collaborative, so we decided to braid our reading together. And so you can also be the meta commentator <laughs> if you want. Um, so Sarah is going to start, and then I'm going to hop in, and then Sarah's going to, you get the idea. <laughs> Great. Um, and just a tiny bit about this. So this is my um, reading stance, so I don't have to adjust the mic. <laughs> um, so uh, this book, Hyperfantasia, you know, came out of that practice. Um, and it follows this figure of Fanta who's this name, femme figure. These figures show up in my work. Uh, there's Babette, there's Perihan, there's Fanta. Um, and I think of her as a traveling fantasy figure. And so I do some performance is uh, in her voice, um, also in a voice speaking to her, also this mechanical robot doll. Um, so you'll see some of that. There's sort of a guide that follows through. One, two, three, began. They call you something before you arrive, a fantasy, and don't you wanna? Yes, yes, I do, the ghost. Yes, yes, when I was born, my mother said, she's beautiful, but she has no neck. Now I'm crouching, tweezing the hars from my one wild Turkish nipple. And what will you do with your one wild, <laughs> precious life? <laughs> I am trying to get enough of the dim, fluorescent light. Hello, I'm Fanta your personal expert on style. I just know we'll be the best of friends. Press yes to set my clock. Time to set my clock. Seven o'clock in the morning. Eight o'clock in the morning. Nine o'clock in the morning. Today's word is hyperfantasia. That means something is really vivid, as in, Fanta in the morning, Fanta in the evening, Fanta at supper time. But hey, even in the coldest dreams, I held him. I felt afraid of what I must embrace around us to make room. 
the threat of his body wrapped itself in a carcass, the necromantic soundtrack played on loop. It said, hello, I'm Fanta, your personal expert on style. I just know we'll be the best of friends. And I'm happy to become an anonymous putty, a model off duty. I'll pause for the camera as a mixed minority. I'll go viral in this vial. I'll go off brand. I'll get lost. Meanwhile, I would rather build my home inside a different question. I would rather have my body studied faithfully while I begin to rot. Thank you. Also, for me, you can make any sounds, um, <laughs> any sort of, uh, yeah. and they are supposed to be funny, a little bit. <laughs> Let me crush on the dove that sits at the end of this poem. Let me trample my naked heart into her nest. Let me only write about orchards and orphans and explode. I don't drag sand in the bed with the soles of my feet. I make it all here on my own. I'm a crusty slit sponge for the sun. There are a few things that I want. Sharp needles pressing deep into my pores while all those egg babies come in strong. I wanna grab all the hair at the back of my throat and tie it up in a bow. Instead of throat, I wanna say throat. I want a blustery dove flying straight into my palm. Outside my window, every dove begins with eyes. Every boy begins as a piece of jellyfish flopping in the tide. In the meantime, I was born in a terrace house that they call an all-girls school. Every room was filled with fluffy bagels and perfect white girl skins. Every girl went on to write a famous book about those bagels on their way to the nut house, which is college. <laughs> when you're not a jellyfish, you're a whore, so you're beautiful. That's what we were taught. Meanwhile, I want to cut off my big Turkish nose and lie face down in his old football color. I'm tired before I arrive. The beat-up the beat VHS of our wedding is trapped inside of the parrot that my therapist keeps locked up in her office closet. The parrot is having a frenzy. The world hands me the word oriental, and I begin to eat its parasites, as if that's fun. In my dream, there is a man hiding inside the tank of the porta potties at a yoga retreat. When it's on the news, my dream comes true. <laughs> my name is Sarah, Sarai, Saro, or Sarah. Saro is a sultan, she is definitely no pharaoh. I weep in my dream because I'm already awoke. At breakfast, I learn to say grace. I say grace for your envy, grace for your anxiety, grace for your money, your language, I hate it. Truly, I am sorry. Let me kiss you while I hold this bitter bite of butter in my mouth. As I said, it was winter. It was the return of the Sultan, Saro. Meanwhile, that dove will have grown into a robot. Good boy. That is why he is so perfect. And that is why he is so pure and sharp. Our dark academia. In my ears, the girls are just learning they are witches, blowing out candles with their minds, fluttering lights, making cakey makeup melt off the jealous ones to moon fed fleshy faces, pockmarked constellations. Our quartet Brooke, Vivian, Louise, Sylvia. Our dark academia, Artemis aesthetic, perfect skin. <laughs> They're getting bitchier, they lean into it, burn the pillowcases with lacy cigarette butts. And when the prefect, this is British boarding fantasy, rotting vines, <laughs> menstrual blood, challenges and lights out, they point as one to a sneak smoke by the matron doing laundry on a Sunday, which is the Lord's work. 
They all, of course, share a secret, which the rest of us would die to know, and so I sacrifice myself. Today, waiting, hands chapped, stomped feet at the reflecting pool, me tiptoeing to stare at their eyes in the water. I can hear them, but they can't me. I'm not real to them in the way that they're too real. In the way they step back, and it's not a reflecting pool, but a deer. Round bloke eye rolling crazily out of its socket. In the way of everything, but don't touch it. All of them long dead in that first pandemic winter. So I make them live it again and again, and I put on their blazers and smooth my face into theirs. This past will overtake us because it already is. <coughs> so it's really, truly a very meta special experience for me to be reading this book in this <laughs> bookstore where um, it was one of the very first places I came when I first came to Harvard. I, I also had no idea that it was like, it, it, this, it, it could accommodate even more than just like two people in this space. <laughs> two would feel like a lot and it feels like a sort of proof of requirement. Um, so it's amazing to see so many of you who I love and know. And um, I'm gonna, um, yeah, this, uh, this um, next one, this next poem, um, it's also in a different voice. And I was, um, I wrote, this is, um, you know, during this project, and I'm by myself in a small attic with a machine that has a lot of friends in it for <laughs> me, so, like, it's nice to have real friends in the room. Um, but Midnight Calisthenics. <clears throat> Hi, what's up? It's Chrissy. I'm so glad you decided to spend this journey with me. I will make this totally easy. You just listen to me. Do everything I say to do, and this will be totally easy. I need you to, to feel supported. I need you to get enough grit underneath. I need it to get gritty. It's cold this morning. I put on this half hoodie, which if you know me, you know I don't usually. Have you ever tried a bath bomb? It totally made my morning. I love it when you make time for yourself. Oh my god, you have a dog too? That is so sweet. Hold it, hold it, that's great. If you incorporate this into your routine, that's great. Or if this is your only workout of the day, good for you for getting moving, really. Good for you. If you don't have a dog, that's okay too. <laughs> You're doing this for you. If you like this, check out more of me. I have a whole series of these on demand. Also, I have a book coming out. So great. I need you to hold on now. Hold it, hold it. Come on, you're on my toes. Come on now. Three, two, one. Okay, towel off. Hydration station. Love it. Do you? That's a milestone. You know those things, pumice stones? Oh my god, game changer. After this, you have to do a dry rub. You have to do a diffuser. You have to do, oh, we're back in the interval. Push it, go. Hold it. Okay, that's the way. Yes, you. You're looking great. Just move up. Suck a little. Yeah, yeah no, suck it in. Yes. <laughs> or suck a little. <laughs> Fucking a lot. Yes, it's you. You're going to get real results. It's getting real. Yes, you chose to carve out this moment for you. No one else gets this time just for you. Hey, I'm Chrissy. Thanks for joining this journey with me. I'll see you all the time. <laughs> slides himself into the landscape. The land's for me. I am responsible. His words come twisting out behind his grave. Half this language flies above me, he screams. And the other half, it sinks below. Even though I cut it off last week, my big Turkish nose has already grown a hideous pair of feet, just so it can follow me around. As if that's fun. If you would only congratulate me on my mosquitoes, my scabies, how I collected white girls, then I became them. How I ran my hot hands right through their bodies and then became a different fantasy while my boat is breaking hard against these waves.
My sister and I are getting married. Dear miser, miser, we are getting married. All the clothes we stole become our dowry. The registry made of mother's plastic jewels. We will make hors d'oeuvres for you and then transform into a different family. We think we are people. We think we are phantoms. We think we are Kardashians. <laughs> Our father's tongue rolls out of his mouth and forms an aisle through the crowd. Then we walk each other down into that earth, Baba, silly Baba, while everybody cheers and daddy laughing drowns. We vow to keep it cute inside this castle till the end. I will wed you to a hole, she says, my very own Miss Mean and Nasty. I will always clog the sink up with your canned tomato hair. The dog swims in the pool all night. The cat runs through the walls. Mom crawls into her cage and sings a bat tune. We are shocked to hear the love implied by such a wretched song. We bury our umbilical cords and live happily ever after. We dig up our umbilical cords and live happily ever after. It gets so close to the mic. <laughs> it's just the way it is. My new desperation is the holographic non-place of a different woman's rage. An empty hole that I kept filling up with mattresses and rot. The blood oxidized inside me long before it trickled out. It was another empty hole that you kept digging at the table. You have a hoarse voice in your dream. You find a plastic shovel we can lie in, a shovel made for two. And then, as if sleep were nothing more than long patience for new hunger, I wrote down 10 new ideas every morning for three days. An empty hole cannot be seen, you say. It's something more like felt. But I'm 60 years old and still searching for drugs. One half of my jaw with all its teeth falls out. I'm 40 years old and fighting pity like disease. It's always there. It's coming back. The empty hole is my disease. Meanwhile, everyone else is washing baby in the sink. Everyone else is dragging unkept promises through the impending tornado, apocalyptic heat. Everyone else is churning endless cloud copy, new candy, another voice of my another chorus of my snappy voice with its face pressed up against the wall. 6 a.m. to not wake up. 7 a.m. to not meditate. 8 a.m. to not pick up the phone. 9 a.m. to not catch new men. And 10 a.m. to not evolve them into husband. 11 a.m. to not unpack my bags like night onto the floor. For every beautiful woman, there's a boring dude who hates to fuck her. <laughs> who said that? How my mother used to crawl around each room to find discarded scraps of pill. Paste the test results on fridge door. Seal every number with an eyeball. Wake me every hour on the hour. Dig a hole with nothing bleeding and no hair torn. And say, Hello, I'm Fanta, your personal expert on style, didn't you know? Felix by proxy. We had arranged to meet under the High Line, outside the Whitney. I was running down from this photo shoot in Chelsea, so I had my clothes stuffed into a hiking backpack, and I was naked except for stilettos. Felix was coming from choir practice. He was tall, very thin, ginger nut hair, a two-vest situation, naked below the knees. Hi, I said, glistening from the running. You must be Jay's friend. Shall we fuck? The ginger nut didn't say anything, eyes white. I stuck out my hand. He looked at my updo. Hi, he said, I'm in three choirs, did Jay tell you? One's way in Harlem, that's the one I like best. The other two down here, one at this church in Tribeca, the other one sort of midtown. He had this soft, moony Irish brogue. Two women in actual pillbox hats, 
tweed suits wheezed past me on their way into the museum. A bus divulged tourists. Another wave of day campers, day glow t-shirts. Wonderful, I said. Shall we fuck on the High Line? He looked at the Hudson River. I'm 17. Fuck, I sighed. <laughs> OK. I shifted my backpack. The straps were cutting into me. I walked Felix to the one train. We parted, he to Harlem for rehearsal, I to my phone. At that point, Mar was just breaking up with Roman, the condom king. Could I have him? What happened with Jay's guy, Ma wrote back. Nope. I'm naked below 18th Street, I texted Roman. But he must have been underground. It didn't send. The line going from blue to green to red. Um, here's the here's a tiny brief oh <laughs> um, here's a tiny brief dark academia interlude where I'm just gonna explain what I'm gonna do with the next um, set of my poems. So there's um, two kind of long sonnet sequences in this book called Corona and Corona Two, <laughs> and there are two crowns of sonnets. And so what a crown of sonnets is is like a sonnet's 14 lines, and so. The last line of the first sonnet becomes the first line of the next, or maybe it's a little bit of a fucked up version of the, of the first line of the next, and so it kind of it braids itself down like that. And then actually there's kind of a bonus um, 15th sonnet at the end that's all of the repeated lines um, stuck together. So um, I'm going to read the first half of Corona 1, and then a little later I'll do the, the latter half of Corona 2. Corona. Oh, brave new world that has no people in it. The things I bought online today, a box of tea and cans of low-sodium soup, a bag of coffee beans, did I buy two? So much gum it won't let me add more quantities. But what if the day comes when gum is gone? A box of printer paper and some ink, a box of pens and notebooks, a jar of raw manuka honey, wetter spoon, because I read somewhere that that's the one. It's never been a better time to fly. Lift your spirit, says Frontier Air. On Instagram, we're all in Mexico and something and the kids are getting drunk. The undergrad's already drunk, thank God, or <laughs> getting there, or please, why don't they start? Three six-foot bros walk not six feet apart. <laughs> when I get nosebleeds, it's bad. Like when a girl gets her period, way more blood. <laughs> this is the kind of thing they tell each other now. I don't know what I'm doing, but I have more Jack Daniels than I know what to do with. I don't know where I'm going because Denmark has closed the schools, the non-essential hospitals, and libraries. I don't have anywhere to put my stuff. I guess I can go home, but I don't have a room. I'm making lemons out of lemonade. We zoom, and manically I try to launch a book, and manically I try to launch my book. What else do people have to do but stay inside and read and read and do the crossword? So say I, although I haven't read a book in weeks and cannot do the crossword now for shit. And manically I start to launch a book the week before the real, real hit. I don't know what to do except to to be as manic as it is possible to be, and then be more. I keep on keeping B. I write my pieces, write on crosswords, write them. I plan events for future time. I'm on and uttering. I plan events for future time, and on and uttering, so chirpy with the present and blinkers on for me. We go ahead and plan the interviews, all radio and sterile room and phone and box. It's always been this way. The launch events were just for me. The real stuff, they tell me, is media. We. <laughs> At first, for days, I blame myself. What did I do? What did I do? Was I the cause of this? It is my fault. I am a little snot. The ending then is still. It is my great and utter karmic fault the book comes out and this the literal end of days. But not the end of literature, or so they say, though who is they? Do not let me ask. 
Hotline for all forthcoming FAQs. Hotline is hold music FAQs. Should I still go to Mexico? Is it okay for me to take a walk? When can I buy more toilet paper? When will they run out of Amy's lentil? There is no more Purell in Vermont. Should I still take the train to Brooklyn? Am I allowed to drive to get the laundry? When will it be not safe at the sky? When will the lights go out in Princeton? When will my orchids start again? When will there be no more free two-day prime? When will I be allowed to pop this zip? Is that a gas leak I'm smelling in my car? I'm gaslighting myself, but with my mania. If I keep moving forward, I will move. I'm out the house more under quarantine than I was before because I shouldn't leave. I eat less and less, but buy more food. I run, still go to bar, and then run home and shower and dress as though I have a place to be and sink into my phone, though not in that order. I've got a million ways to go, but only exactly one place to be. I cannot, cannot stay, although that's true every time I leave. I'm clinging to my office. The thing is, it's not even my car. It's Grandma's car, and no, she hasn't died. We'll all, we'll all die, except the kids, or so they say. It seems that nature always has a way. I've clung to student conferences, but no, but cannot feel that these will be the first to go. First students, then the lights. In conferences, I'm editing an op-ed on the sly, straight in front of their faces. It's the end of days, and the only thing left in the world for me to do is hurl a book with all my energy and all my might. My mother was 31 when she had me to keep myself from sliding from the light, to keep myself within my frame of sight. sound takes flight, and the brunch crowd starts their roaring. It's nothing new. The new bitch licks her core lips through the broken quarant clock. I fill my own mouth with 10,000 marbles, cold machines on the move in the dark. I become the itchy meat suit that you see here, these days quite barren. My reflection all stuffed up with hot boy bots. Meanwhile, I'd prefer to attach these good girls to my body, build a rat nest full of language, write these garbage texts all night. I ask them to say some words into my cell phone, like minivan, heavy metal, shopping bag, hand lotion. I don't have a plan. They would prefer to be married with their thin, tormented sisters. The new bitch sends me Bibles, broken mousetraps, empty code. Then she sends a ghost who eats up all our former kisses. Eventually, this whole yard will be littered with my hairs, my pills, my bones. And it is only the children who, rotting inside me, will still sit still to paint those bones. Slightly out of order in the book. Oh my gosh. I mean, the book's not out of order, although, yeah. We won't go into that. My sister calls me on the blender. It was our wedding gift. I tell her to avoid the burning touch, the burning finger touch of men. Next, we write a wiki now to hate them for their touching. Next, we're sitting in the bedroom closet with no more parrot. No more blender, no more yelling, no more dove. I can hear my own obsessions giggle in the darkened corner. My sister is an infant, so I transcribe her words. Then I try to sell them like a book. I am a book. I am responsible. These are my deepest praises for an empire we still believe we own. Like a villain, I pray these words will hide us in abyss, abyss then fling me up the stars. And then, I was already in the habit. I had still hopes. I worked on her. I weeped against the grid. Nothing else came out. I worked on him. I was the martyr of my own timid implosions. I said, this is the history of zero-point history. 
she said, hello, I'm Fanta, your personal expert on style. She said, hello, I'm Fanta, yes, yes, I do, the ghost. today, of course, is super blue. Honestly, I feel fine, magic even. My nose is sparkly, very clean. Sparkly is a very COVID feeling. The new, new Coke is COVID, scrub daddy, chlorinated sinuses. On my third day, I didn't know I had it. That was on the day of excess. I went out running in the sun, Three blocks in, a freaky hailstorm rent across the sky. A schlubby guy, Coke bottle glasses, came out of a basement hobbit hole to snap a pick. The ground was very slick, with sudsy clods of hail still glomming up the throat. I open the drain weasel and stick it down my throat, swab it in a big circle five times, and then swab again the other way, sing happy birthday to myself. That's how I know I've done enough and hawk a Satan strength dreadlock of viral load. I stick the snake up my nostril and peel out my brains like an orange all in one go. Cara cara, sumo. More manuka, now an elderberry flavor. I did the elderberry dummies, didn't help. I stuck my finger, waited for my breath. I simply couldn't grade ever again in this my COVID adult brain. In the great brain robbery, applicants must understand there will be no compensation. Both parents got their boomer quad boosters. Everyone got neonatal immunity. I'm empty, zero-sum womb with students in the waiting room languishing in their antechambers. If everyone's in breakout, is anyone? This is one of the true question of our, of our generation. <laughs> this brings holidays, can jest together, Passover, Ramadan, Good Friday, Easter Sunday. My mom says she caught it over the phone from me. <laughs> I'm not even sacrificial. Little lamb, little lamb, who made thee? A little more than kinder, less surprise. When I lived in the toxic house, surprise mold steep, steep from the bathroom stall to wherever else goes mold, baseboard attic lungs. The other women in that house called themselves a coven, fought, laughed, fucked, still talked daily in my head, but not to me. One time, all four separate cartons of eggs had progressed somewhere past their best buy dates. Am I not woman if I do not bleed enough? If Tuesday is day zero, it's day of consequence. If you have two legs, run. My teledoc says fine. If you have one leg, hop. If you have no legs, go. Day one, the day of the experimenter. Nothing is insignificant. Weakness, temperpedic, overwrought. I went to bed with overwrought muscles, even for me, my quads ache gently all the time, but woke up in the middle of the night, spasming in sharp gold blades. I'd never walk again. That kind of nervous damage gone electric, the kind that spreads like a toxic dye, pal, radioactive. This COVID has harvested my data and it goes haywire in the body, smashing every button on the elevator so the whole wall lights up buttons and the door has to jutter open on this at every floor, revealing people to themselves and the people to the world. The body is a body and the body is a world. I'll never walk again. I wake up, zock doc, physical therapist. I skip the symptom steps. What is near me on a Saturday? I call. There's no one in till the third office. We don't sync with Zokdok, says the sec. But I can get you an appointment Monday first thing. No. My pathos is braiding itself down to the floor. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, what do you dread? Today's the day of the policymakers. Because I'm nothing if not a great test taker. I take myself to test for it again. Then do a peloton, the same time as my brother and sweat it steady, damned if I am dead. The things I bought myself online again. I want someone to panic for my life. 
I knew I was singing it in rows. I knew that I could never really date from the start, empty girl inside. On the day of no nonsense, we're back. I live so I don't have to think. I embody, I shape. That next morning sky is clueless blue. The sky today is super glue. I open the drain weasel and stick it down my throat. Feel the brain to cryptic core. I judder in the bed so overbought. The body keeps the body, and this body is a fraud. I'm home. I'm ready. I'm damned, but not yet dead. American writer and illustrator. Her book, The Magic My Body Becomes, was a finalist for the Believer Poetry Award and won the Edel Adnan Poetry Prize, as awarded by the Radius of Arab American Writers and University of Arkansas Press. She is a 2022 Mass Cultural Council Artist Fellow. Please welcome Jess. <laughs> So witnessing it right now, so that's so cool. <laughs> um, yeah, congrats to Sarah, Adrian, Dean, Ellie. They have like cool shit coming into the world. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop touching the mic. In another dimension, I am a good daughter. I wake up early. I sweep the floor. I put coffee on the nod. My Arabic is serpentine through dirt, ready to strike, yet I slice apples in silence as the men speak of revolution. I offer fruit on the tip of a knife I pull from my skirt when no one is looking. When I am named beautiful, I don't ugly my shape out of spite. I sing songs about what I want only when I am alone. I say ouch as soon as the sting swells and don't save the venom in my cheek for later. I accept the limitations of my body, but still refuse help. To suffer in silence is saintly, so I won't have to admit I'd never offer my eyes to God. When someone says with admiration, it's as if you are a sister among brothers. I don't scoff. In this dimension, I'm still better than all the sons you could have had. This one's called Q-Teen, like quarantine. Um, Q-Teen Thoughts. Um, there's a line from the show Psych in it. We can play like a guessing game after. <laughs> um, the past is a gin sitting on your chest. Dreams aren't warnings, they are forecasts. The weather will always get inside your body where the convergence of meaning strikes. So learn to swim. The other woman is you with different teeth. Always a rose on the table for blessings and two for love, which is a container for a shared vocabulary of symbols. Stand in front of your mirror. What tarot card are you today? Consider your posture. Are you held up by a stem, a wick, a sword in stone waiting for the hand of God? Ya God, ya Allah. God and Allah are the same articulations of wind realized at different registers. You don't have to be praying all the time. Often, you are heard the first time. A gift to be read. You are always a watcher, but it's never too late to be a doer. To plunge a trowel into dirt and tuck a seed behind the unknown's ear. 
The sun is a sound, the heart is a radio when you dream of your love singing, and a thermometer when you begin to forget the shape of their ears. An owl is just the sky whistling through its nose while sleeping. When the color blue rests its eyes and it's just night, not sadness. There's a million reasons a horse loses. None of them have to do with crystals and moonbeams, but partly to do with blood. The tools are important, but ultimately do you know how to be your own light, dappled through milkweed? Butterflies and moths are two sides of the same shaft of light. Their shadows on the wall are projection, two sides of the same hope. You are protected. Can anybody see the future? What's over there? Why is there always a president? Why is everyone a cop or a test? If you drop a question mark, you're supposed to flip it heads up for the next person, the bulb from which a penny grows. Dead ends, dead ends are doors with no handles. Even in hell, you keep digging. Fate is just pheromones. That's a cool sentence, but do I believe it? That's a nice question, but can it carry my weight? When a sickness doesn't kill you but still takes pounds of flesh, there is a separate heaven for your melted parts and the clouds spread above us. Our bodies are part of the water cycle. Water has memory. Our bodies repeat like calendars. The clouds are archives. Fact check me, baby. And then strike the record. The world's a needle like my finger when I trace the lines on his palm. And then a blackbird flew out of his, out of his mouth in the dead of night, a song. Graceful, mine. That's just one example. I don't have another. Like, I feel it, like my body knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, I made a zine chapbook thingy. It came out in the, well, I, it came out, I published it in the summer. Um, I'm going to read a poem from it. Okay. Um, this one is called I'm a Master of Fine Arts. Here is an academic reading of Frank O'Hara. <laughs> they already gave me the paper, they can't take it away from me. <laughs> For Grace After a Party by Frank O'Hara is about getting ready for a date with someone, but you're thinking about someone else. Later in the night, you and that date run into their friends who work at some doomed startup in Clinton Hill. You space off while they all catch up. Someone pulls out a picture of their depressed poodle. You don't care, but your makeup makes it look like you do. You're finally blushing the right parts of your cheeks. And then the band starts playing, so everyone stops talking, like it's too loud to talk, and you are relieved. That's your little secret. And so is that letter you eventually start writing in your head. It's addressed to the person you'd rather have next to you, their hand sliding up your thigh under the table instead, their mouth on yours later instead. You write and write and sigh and drink and beam, scrolls unfurling for miles, fields of poppies opening in your face. But you never send it because you never sit down to write it, because by the time you get home, it's been three bars later and a slice of pizza for the road. Your stop is under construction and the sky is lighter, so the letter has become birds and you can't write down whistles. That language doesn't fit inside pens. Scientifically, it's impossible. You go to bed and dream about water filling up all the subway stations, but no one dies because the trains have been steampunk whales this whole time, so they're still going to take us where we need to go. But you wake up before you get there and your phone lights up, and the person you actually love has texted you, something tender, but not enough to fold the map. Instead of telling them everywhere you went inside your head last night and how they were with you the whole time, you send them a picture of your eggs, just plain scrambled and the warm weather is holding. Mm -hmm. um. Another um, Frank poem. <laughs> um, this one is um, it's um, made with like lines from the poem for the Chinese New Year and for Bill Berkson. Um, oh my God! I just realized I never told you guys the psych line from the second poem. 
It's fine, you're just going to have to watch the whole series. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Um, oh yeah, so my poem is called For the Spring Semester and for Hannah Rago, After and with lines from Frank O'Hara. And Hannah Rago is one of my best friends, but also like a really brilliant poet that you should all read. One. Behind New York, there's a face. It's everyone's, and they are so cute today. Earnest, looking for elevators. Me and Hannah ate bibimbap and discussed the consistency of fish cake. Also, the Republic. They're in love with a punk who is in love with the revolution. We make windmill arms in front of the candy shop like we are children again. We link arms like we are in love. We're not. But we both have big eyes that confuse people we look at some of whom don't want us to be in love with them. I want to make us t-shirts that say, I'm not in love with you, that's just how big my eyes are. <laughs> Sometimes I look at someone the same way I look at an empty bus seat, and other times the way I look at the ocean. You can't tell the difference. I want to make t-shirts that say, I'm either in love with you, or that's just how big my eyes are. So big, an entire me could pass through the center on her way to something despicable to want in the middle of the end, Hannah says their heart feels seismographic, or is that the earth, too? A lot is buried under the West Village, like bones and beaks and bottles under concrete on top of which we sidestep an animal roughly every three feet. Sometimes I can't stand New York because of how perfect the dog culture is. <laughs> it's crazy that in 20 years, every dog on this earth that is alive right now won't exist anymore. What a statistic. No, what a turnover. This makes me feel better about the five students who dropped my class in the last two weeks. <laughs> you see, in dog years, two weeks is enough for me to leave anything behind. There's too much to discover before the end of treats. Dogs don't know what war is. The mushroom cloud is a second sun that turns the people into food. Here we are, and what the hell are we going to do? Three. It's cold, but it's not. It's 55 degrees in January, a sweaty cheesecake day. The robin in the grass is puffy and red like the word splat. Hannah asks, is that bird okay? And then, is that bird alive? And then, it flies away. In two to five years, every common bird in New York City won't exist anymore. In their place, a new generation. I read somewhere that ancient migration patterns are ingrained into the cellular memory of every bird. If you never migrate, what are you leaving for your offspring to follow when the sky marries the fog to escape itself? Cigarette butts and phlegm. Four. Yes, it is strange that everyone fucks and everyone mentions it, and it's boring, too. As I try to sleep, my mind wanders. How many teeth have chewed a little piece of the lover's flesh? I haven't seen him in four dog weeks. How many teeth are there in the world? One whole year and another half, but if I woke up next to him after making a child, I would keep it. Immediately, I sit up and begin searching the internet for a therapist. <laughs> Five. I know we're all fucked up here because every time I read that part, nobody laughs. We all laughed. <laughs> Five. I'm looking for a million dollar heart and a carton of frozen strawberries. So I'm not getting married unless it is to my work. Don't tell my grandparents. They will find out at the reception when I release the birds into the empty rafters of myself and dust will become me as I become the fog getting out of my own way. I'm scared of having children, the spinal tap at the parasite store. Oh, how God, oh God, how I'd love to dream, let alone sleep, the soft air with a certain amount of rapture. What do you do with a kid? But if it would have my eyeballs, I'd do it. Six. Yes, Hannah is still here, we are still in New York, it is still the end of the world and the end of the day. As we digest, as we talk about stained glass, hours before I read the glass essay by Ann Carson and I become casually undone into the night, my skin curling into ropes around the incisor in the center of my chest. I have often tried to say goodbye to strange phantoms. Seven. I have a t-shirt that says, don't touch me, because when I tremble, it makes a noise. A bird trapped in an elevator, like the word thunk, which in another dimension is the past tense for think. That dimension is my throat when I am nervous and want to take it all back. It seems that breath could easily fill a balloon and drift away, like Saturn does after he returns as a proposition of days, of days, just an attack on the feelings that stay. One day I'll be left on red five dog years later, my feet up on the table looking cool as hell, and I won't even need a cigarette. Oh God. Sorry. Okay. Um, this is my last poem. <laughs> 
Thank you so much. Um, this is called California in the Summer and My Hair is Growing Long, which um, <laughs> is a Jackson lyric um, because I was a teenager in 2007. <laughs> In the lift, on my way to meet my friends to go to the beach where I will have no cell service all day, four news stories in a row are about women who have gone missing or dismembered and tetris into the trunk of a car, and men with knives, and men with guns, and men, and men, and men. The driver says, this weather is unreal. It's perfect. You're in Los Angeles at a great time. The mountains around us shadowed from the wildfires, dappled by green. The sky blue like the future I saw during a dream I had while awake. Unreal. Perfect. Great. It's possible to care about someone more than you actually know them. Knowing is not linear, but it is shimmering. The heart shimmers 60 to 100 times per minute like an ocean. We call this beating, like it's a race. My heart is the most itself when I'm perfectly still watching the ocean, watching sunlight access your face, and then a wave pulls me under. I dreamt a jinn possessed each patch of earth my, under my feet so that every time I tried to ground myself and bounce back into my stride, my breath was squeezed from me like I was a toothpaste tube. I woke up to rain, to a chill, to a finger like a probe in my frontal lobe. Mama says my dreams could be warnings, they could be family magic, they could be me not getting enough oxygen to my brain as I sleep. I choose my own adventure. I wake up, stretch out, leave the house in all my rouge. I'm reaching for life, for love, for my people, for this night of dancing with them. Our language is a matter of fact, not fetish. My hair a fading violet, less violent on the eyes than what I shrouded with box dye, but the roots never rest. Hairs grow long because our bodies are always reaching for something, even when we are perfectly still. The disco ball shimmers the room into an ocean, which is just outer space upside down. Blue light fills each face, each mouth of teeth perfect and imperfect, framed by dimples. I could connect every face in this room this way, each of us a planet, but also the most audacious constellation. The banner behind the bar says, space is the place. And it is. That's true. I could run around yelling about it till I die. Uh, there's no ceiling up there, but all this room to grow, to weave, to pass the joint, to hit the high, to dull the dream, but stretch out inside this moment. It's a trade-off that keeps you closer to the ground, like tying a balloon to a fence. But you're still a balloon. But that's still a fence. There's still a wall and a border and camps and children in cages as I dance. In my dream, I walked around with a bloody third eye, so casual. I pick and pick at my instincts as I ride the bus. Everyone's got somewhere to be, even me. I always forget. I get lost between each step. I'm afraid to ask certain questions. What did the test results say? Do you love me or not? Salt at the crosswalk to melt ice and another in my eyes to melt pain, or at least erode its immortal bus living in the center of my brain. That's not how science works. Yeah, I get it. What's your favorite common denominator between skin and sky, between marbles and minutes, shoelaces and time? It's a fun game. Mad libs for the waiting room between yesterday and next year. I've decided I'm not interested in what's meant to be unless it lines up with who I want to be. Who I want to be encompasses the recognition of what I deserve. A soundbite is, no one owes you anything. The truth is, literally no one believes that. I'm owed words in place of static and dehydration. I'm owed clean water. I have it and others don't. I owe them my attention and muscles. Could you peel borders back like a charcoal strip and reshape them into a box on the gymnasium floor? Could you round up every capitalist and store them inside long enough to ransack their shitty morals and replace them with, I don't know, feathers or something? If energy cannot be destroyed, then that means we'd still have an island of garbage energy mirroring the literal island of garbage the size of Texas in the middle of the ocean. We should stick the flag of every country on it and pledge allegiance. It would glitter under the sunset, the wind whistling through glass bottles and tin cans, enough to raise the hairs on your arms, a national anthem. No one would really tell the difference. If only a country could be everything that fits inside my heart and everything that my heart fits inside of. Jeff Bezos made $112,000 in the time it took me to write that last sentence. 
A door ripped from its hinges is both a violence and a liberation. Propped against the rocks, the big rocks, the ones at the beach, you know the ones. It opens into the stars. That's what we tell each other and call it world building, and I believe us. We've always been tipped axis out of orbit, the right colors in the wrong galaxy, the wrong spiral. I'm reckless throwing out vocab to prop up an aesthetic. I'm making mist to flood the lamp. I'm making my escape. I'm making a goddamn scene, but I'm free. Toni Morrison just passed away, Allah Yirhamah. She said, if we get free, we've got to free someone else. It's up to the rest of us to help each other get free, but not dead. Not yet. Not if we can help it. And I want to help it. I want so much to help us. And I want so much. I twirl from the car instead of stumbling because I've learned to ride the momentum of my body, to lean into the knowing of my step. How when it goes, it keeps going, doesn't stop, no, not even for an I love you through the car window, riding the night behind me. But I know it's there, full of every context and layer of atoms it passed through on its way to me, to make me seen, to make me safe. And for now, it's true, and for as long as I am, I love you too. Thanks so much. to Dianelli, Adrian, Sarah, and Jess. Um, there are books for sale, and uh, James, the deal is we're supposed to put the stack of chairs on the side over there? Yes, if you could all stack the chairs, and let's give uh, the poets another round of applause for our beautiful readers. <laughs>